Yeah. Hello, I am back. And here is my smoke from a future time. Whoa, scary time traveling smoke. Yes, it is I, the Terminator. <laughs> the, the, the coordinator. I just thought about that. I just made it up. The coordinator. That's brilliant. Anyway, no, it is the Terminator. In fact, I cannot say th because I am Arnold Schwarzenegger, so I can only say the Termin Terminator. That sounds like the Termite, Termite Terminator. Anyway, what a show we have for you today because I am totally robotic and I have an exciting extra special guest. We have not had a guest on the show for so many years. Uh, it's so exciting, although time means nothing to me because I travel through the time. Uh, we have got a special guest, Roy Min, with his amazing Thera Min. I don't know if you can even see it, but it's happening behind me. The lights have all gone dim. Oh, what is going on? Never mind. Uh, we've got a total power failure. Uh, okay, we're going to start with uh, some proper tunes from the memory of the computer brain. Uh, this is called Sandy McGaff. I may have to keep the glasses off for a moment. <laughs> the mist of time since Doctor Who episode. That was almost two years ago. As they say in the German, uh, in the German industrial uh, robot manufacturing way. And now you're probably wondering what I am doing here. Well, <laughs> you're not the only one. I am also thinking this, but it's too long a story to explain. If you've not seen the show before, uh, it's a crazy idea. It started two years ago, but we are still going strong. Well, I wouldn't call this going strong, would you? But here we are still. Anyway. What I'm doing, what my character is doing today is, I am, of course, a Terminator. 
coming back from hundreds of years in the future. Well, the future is awful. Yes, it's even worse than here right now. And I've come back to this time because I am searching for junk corner. Yes, the junk owner, the owner of the junk that is called an accordion because this one tiny accordion played by an evil man called Sandy Brechin here in the center of Edinburgh causes the whole world a hundred years from now to be taken over by little accordion players because his music is so damn popular people cannot stop playing uh, the accordion and I have come back to kill John Connor. Yes, kill the owner of this piece of junk. I shall call him John Connor. Have you got it yet? <laughs> <laughs> I can't live with that one anymore. John Connor. I've been sent to back in time to kill John Connor. I thought I was really clever myself. Okay. Okay, that's enough. Uh, that's enough of that, yeah. I'm just too smart for my own good. You know what? We need more smoke here. We need more smoke. We must have more smoke. Uh, Mr. Time. Okay, what's next? I can't see a thing through these glasses, by the way. These glasses are amazing. I was researching for months tr trying to get this costume together. I just ended up throwing on a leather jacket, my cycling gloves, which are very hard to play the accordion in, by the way, because they're padded. Ah, ah, it's like, it's like I can't get the fingers close enough together. And, uh, and the, yeah, the main thing was the glasses. Spray here. Easy. Spray it on. Although I keep scratching my head before the show, getting, getting cold fingertips, but... Uh, I washed it off before the show began, so nice clean fingers. I don't want any grubby marks on this accordion. Because this is the famous accordion that starts the whole the whole thing, the takeover of the world with all the accordions. Yes, but the crucial piece of, uh, what do you call it, property, property, uh, the proper property is this set of uh, glasses. I researched for months <clears throat> about these glasses, and they were really uh, uh, designer glasses from the 1980s when they brought out the film, was it 1982? And yeah, they're hundreds of pounds if you want to buy a pair now. Anyway, I found these in a charity shop for one quid, or I think it was actually 50p. They are golf ball finding glasses, yes. And they're actually, they're, they're sort of blue colour, so that your white golf ball appears glowing white in the middle of blue grass. I don't know why it helps you find them, but anyway, they're unbelievably dark. I can't actually see what I'm doing with them on, which is why I had to lift them up. Uh, <coughs> anyway, very effective, don't you think? Yeah, very effective. They are effective. Okay. Back on to the serious part of the show now. Yes, there is a serious part. Of course there's a serious part. Uh, what is the serious part? Oh yes, Highlander's Revenge by <coughs> my old mucker, Bruce McGregor. <laughs>
Highlanders revenge. Yes, we are in Scotland after all. That was very nice. Oh, uh, now, today is the 1st of May. Yes, it is May Day. It is the start of summer. Although times of the year mean nothing to me because time means nothing to me because I have just come through the mists of time. However, for all you pathetic uh, humans, yes, it's very important, especially in Scotland, to have the first day of summer, and today is actually ridiculously hot outside. Even though I am just a machine, my external human pretend covering is so effective that I am pissing with the sweat, as you can see. <laughs> it's incredibly realistic. He looks just like a real... He's an accordion player, but he looks almost human. <laughs> Okay, uh, yes, yeah, so delighted to have so hot weather here in Scotland for the first time in ever that I can remember. Yes, I've been sent uh, with the wrong clothes by Hairnet, my superior computer network. Hairnet has sent me uh, with far too warm a jacket on, so I would need to change into my, sh my Terminator short trousers and t-shirt somewhere in the middle of the show probably. Anyway. Uh, we can look forward to that. Here are some Shetland tunes in the meantime. I think I've lost the Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm, sp I'm speaking too fast. Yes, I should be speaking like this. This is the Terminator. Yes, now I have it. Now I play tunes from Shetland, but I take my glasses off. Otherwise, I cannot read the music. This suspense is real.
shit back into Shetland. <laughs> oh dear. Yes, well, a brief attempt, a brief attempt. Now, oh, my glasses have all steamed up. It must be Mr. Time. Speaking of which, we need some more mists. What is wrong with the smoke? It normally hangs around for ages, but now it seems to be very poor quality smoke I've brought with me from the future. I must get some better smoke next time. Next time I come back, because I will be coming back. I will be back. I will be back in so many repeat episodes. You won't believe it. Uh, so many variations on a theme, but it's great. I love it. Uh, now, the next tune is a very sensitive one. And yes, even as a robotic accordion player, I can, I can do sensitive. Yes, I have been programmed to do sensitive. Here we have the very sensitive slow air sitting, I said, sitting in the stern of a boat. Uh, I'm not sure my pronunciation is absolutely correct for the Scottish version. I don't believe it, my circuits have failed me. I, I have forgotten how it starts. <laughs> uh, oh, oh my God. Uh, now that is the old resting chair. Ah, that is it. Thank you for the download, Hairnet. People don't understand the pressure I'm on. Under. just texted me on my phone. I've seen the message in front of me. They want... No, they don't want me to stop. How cheeky. He wants to come and see your room available for the flat early. No, you can't come now. I'm doing a show. Go away. Why does everybody else not have robotic planning like me? I've ever played the accordion with cycling gloves on. It is very damn hard.
Yeah, that was sitting. I said sitting in the stern of a boat. Yes, very sensitive, like only a robot can play. I do not know what is going on with these sweat glands. Hairnet has implanted the wrong sweat glands into me. I specifically asked for the sweat glands of the grand old Duke of York, who does not sweat, of course, but <laughs> given me some other bugger sweat glands who sweats profusely. Never mind, I've got one more set of boring tunes before we get on to the exciting special guest who is going to play the instrument of mass destruction, the, Z the Terramin. I cannot say th. I must say it's that Terramin. Never mind. His name is Mr. Min. I will introduce to you to him very shortly. First of all, though, I would like to play a tune called the Kitchen Piper. Aha. Ah. Before the Kitchen Piper, I will play another tune. I have announced them in reverse order just to confuse you. Yes, the first one I will play is Duncan Johnston, named after the famous Piper. Oh, God, now I've forgotten how that goes as well. <laughs> oh, yes. You must forgive me. I'm just the old T-800 model. I wish I was all fancy and silky, smooth, uh, runny, runny, silvery metal like Mercury, like the T-1000. But that has not been invented yet because this is episode one of the Terminator, just to explain. Anyway, back to Duncan Johnson. <laughs> difficult to play the triplets with the cycling gloves on. Why did I ask that motorbiker person to give me his clothes, his boots, and his motorbike? I mean his accordion. I don't know. It was a silly mistake at the time. Anyway, now we get to the really exciting part of the show where I beam in from the future my extra friend Terminator. Yes, because even in the future Terminator robots have friends. Yes, I know it's hard to believe that I have any friends. But I've got a special friend guest here, and that beeping tells me his time machine is ready to send him in. It may actually have been the dishwasher ending its cycle, but <laughs> let's just go with the time machine ready, set to go. He, here he comes. Watch behind me. We already have his theremin ready and waiting for him right here. 
I would like to bring the the Roy Therminator. There he is, appearing magically in time behind me. Roy Min, you're perfectly named to play the Theremin. What, where, what time have you come from? I have come from a hundred thousand million years in the future. No, you haven't. You've just come from the couch over there. I've been watching you for the last 20 minutes. You're a terrible liar. Damn. I, <laughs> I thought I had sneaked in through the time portal. You have, you have <laughs> sneaked in through the portal. We call it a door. A door. I opened it for you half an hour ago. Never mind. <laughs> we shouldn't really give away all our, our technical secrets on the show like this. It's, it's all in the props. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes, we have we have, so, we have quite a special bond between I, us here. It's a sparky comedy, yeah. We are, we are, we are both model T eight hundred. Yeah, we're a little bit crap. Aye, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. Again. Okay, I'm a little bit crap. He's a little bit good. Now no. this is a this, if I'm not mistaken, my little Terminator friend, is a real theremin that you have brought here from a future time, and and I believe that you have been playing the theremin. You're the only person I know that plays the theremin. <laughs> it's amazing. For many years, is that right? Oh, I have been playing or trying to play for around about 10 years. And you're a very clever robot because you can not only play the, ser the theremin, but you can yeah. also manufacture it yourself. I, I, I have made one theremin. He has made his own theremin. 10 years ago. Oh my God, 10 years is nothing for people of our infinite lifetimes. Um, Anyway, I hear that you, so, since you have now been beamed into the center of Scotland in 2022, way back in time, I understand that you want to play a Scottish number with me. Is that correct? Well, I will try my best. This, this instrument is built from... Uh, pieces of rubbish, by the look of it. Pardon? <laughs> pieces of rubbish, by the look of it. Yes, it's plumbing and, plumbing and <laughs> timber from dead <laughs> frames. <laughs> Uh, 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 Leon Thurman and an old CB radio. And Sorry, you were explaining. Leon so Thurman. Leon, Leon Thurman designed this in 1918. Oh my, my God! So it is one of the very first electronic instruments, and in a sense, it was being from the future to the past. And we're kind of somewhere in the middle between the future and the past. But I guess that's always the case that with the present. The <laughs> Indeed. So, now, I, I don't know if the people can, out there in Facebook world can see the, how it looks, but it doesn't really matter because there's not much to see anyway. It's, it's just, a, just a box. A box with a squiggly bit and a, a squiggly sticky bit. bit. And two antenna. One, one controls the pitch and one controls the volume. And it's difficult to play. It is very difficult to play. Even, I'm not even going to attempt it. Even for a model T800, <laughs> it is difficult to play. Well, we're going to give it a try. What is the name of the very old piece, almost as old, in fact, it's even older than the theremin that we're going to play? Well, the piece I would like to play uh, is Neil Gow's Lament to the Death of His Second Wife. So that is very charming, charming for a Terminator. Charming for a Terminator. And I, the thing is, I do not know what her name was, but I know it was not Sarah Connor. Ah, that is good, because otherwise we would have to go and kill her. Ah. <laughs> yes. so, yeah. sa so, Sandy, sa just one moment until I tune this. It okay, okay. So I will change it, the name to uh, Neil Gow's Lament for the Death of Sarah Connor. There will be no lamenting when Sarah Connor is dead. Oh, I can hear it warming up. Let's, woo, let's get some more smoke. We need smoke. We need the mists of time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is such an exciting show. Oh, he's just revving it up there. Oh, I've been, I've been rubbing the dye off my hair again. It is very temperamental. <laughs> Uh, you know, I once considered having a pet in this house, but uh, that was nothing compared to looking after one of these things. In fact, the Terramid could be a Terminator pet. Yeah. It's, quite a, it's got quite a groovy rhythm. Yeah. Wow. 
jump straight back to 1950s black and white science fiction films. Neil Gal never wrote that bit. <laughs> that's that's your own variation. No, Sandy. I do not want so your, like books, a your clothes and your glasses. That is what good. What I would like is a D. Ah, I can do this. Now we are talking. This is the Terminator smile. Yeah. So as not to scare the humans. Broken. And now, for the first time ever in the history of the world, we have the accordion and Thurman duo played by two Terminators.
Oh, this was fantastic. Let us do what the humans do and clap stupidly their hands together. Give him a big round of applause. Oh, stop, it's gone mental. Wow. Ah, ooh. Now, we are going to send you back, Roy, in the midst of time. Send you back in the midst of time with more stock. <laughs> Here we go. Thank you so much, Roy, man, ladies and gentlemen. Back to the future with you. Oh, that's an Ooh. idea. That's an idea. Is it not oh. for another show? It is. <laughs> Look at him disappear in time. Wow. Right back in time to the sofa. That's amazing special effects in the show. How do they afford it? <laughs> They just have one man chain smoking in the corner and another man flashing his bicycle real light, but it's so it's so damn effective. Right, we have an encore from uh, Chrissy Chrissy Stewart here for you, but I'm afraid we don't have time for the encore, and he's been sent back forward in time now. Is it back in time or forward? I, I think he's sent back forward in time. You know what I mean. Uh, anyway. Thank you for the request for an encore. But you're only going to get an encore and solo accordion because we only have, that's been so much fun, we only have four minutes left. And what we are going to play is uh, a little selection of reels to finish the show. Because no, we cannot finish it on the fun of the theremin. No, we must have back to the boring old accordion before it is wiped off the place. Uh, wiped off the place? Wiped off the face of the place <laughs> by the Terminator. Yes, we will destroy your accordions. Oh, God. I cannot remember how any of the tunes start today. Uh, uh. Oh, now I remember. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Ah, what a dramatic end to this film. It's not a film, it's just a show, but you know what I mean. Well, the midst of time we're working on so on there, that is because, you know, it is almost time for me to go back to the future. Oh, that's the name of another film. Stop saying that. Uh, <laughs> Okay, I can do I can do a good Christopher Lloyd. Anyway, yes, yeah, it's time for me to say goodbye. And uh, thank you for watching yet another show. Uh, thank you to everyone who came along to Leith Croft yesterday to watch and listen and dance to uh, the amazing Sandy Brickham, accompanied by his friend on drums, Jim Walker. Uh, and we did the Kaylee in the Pouring Rain for the Leith, Leith Croft. Uh, it was very exciting, and, but at least we had the gazebos on top of us to keep us dry. Not that it matters, because I'm just a robot and I can take any kind of rain action, because we are invulnerable to all that kind of stuff like weather and bullets and stuff. Anyway, that's enough chit-chat for me. I'm going to go out now with some smoke as I return to the future. Aha, you thought I was going to say back to the future. Oh no, I just did it again. I'm going to return to the future in the midst of time, and I'm going to go out as Arnie did at the end of Terminator 2 with a big thumbs up. Here we go, folks. I say to you, goodbye. I'm not sure if I'll be back. And off. Wow. <laughs> Great show, Roy. Great show. Wow. Oh, ah, I can't believe I'm still doing this shit after <laughs> two years. Now. Ah, yeah. Tell you what, though, that uh, that hairspray looks really good. I wonder if I could get something a bit more permanent. It just keeps keeps coming off. And my yeah, that's the, the, oh. the, the, the thing about dyeing your hair, Sandy, is that you have to keep on doing it. Ah, I see. Right. Yeah. Because the minute you stop, uh -huh. your hair goes kind of instantly. Great. I, and, and everybody notices, and everybody yeah. Notices. Yeah, that's the only problem, yeah. What, what I need is to, like, you know, really, something, something really strong. Instead of just spray, black spray, I need, uh -huh. I, I need something like, I don't know. I've tried everything, boot polish, hairspray, but it's, it's also temporary. As soon as I wash my hair, it comes out. Right. I don't know. I need to, I, I need to eat something. I need to eat cold dust, maybe. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, my dad was a miner. Oh, he really? He had good hair. Well, maybe, oh. maybe you could, have you got any coal dust kicking around the house that I could? Nah. Or, no. Okay. Oh my God! I think I've left that on. I have. Oh, I'm so sorry. Bye. <laughs> Bye.